Well, 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 here we are again, discussing angels and all of their downsides. Look, if you're gonna summon something, you'd best fully understand exactly what it is you're doing. Not everyone is well versed in scholarly theology or religious history though. Some of us are just a bunch of schmucks who think angels and demons are neat to think about. So thank goodness there are all sorts of fun, simple resources out there for all of your angelic needs. Plus, as you'll see today, there are also plenty of totally fictional angels that make appearances in everyone's favorite pop culture pieces. So let's get right into it. The top 5 scary angels you should never summon, part 5. Coming in number 5, we've got Sephiroth. Not all angels have two wings. Some just have one, and that's enough to cause more trouble than probably anything else. The story of Sephiroth is a famous one indeed, as he has claimed a spot in the hallowed halls of video game fame. With his recent addition to Smash Bros, his legacy grows even larger, and now it's almost impossible to ignore him in conversations about famous video game villains. But how does he fit in this conversation about angels? Well, don't summon Sephiroth. Just don't do it. There are so many ways he can make your life living hell. Born to a morally depraved scientist and his helpless wife, Sephiroth was injected with cells from Genova, an extraterrestrial being of great power. With this power, he was able to develop into a super soldier of sorts, getting all sorts of tough tasks done for the Shinra company, and inspiring countless soldiers to be like him. The cell implant was only the beginning, as later in his life, Sephiroth began committing terrible atrocities in search of power and revenge. Learning of the experiments done to him and the fate that befell his mother, Sephiroth decided that it was time to annihilate some people. He leveled the Shinra headquarters, killing everyone inside, and who could forget the good old Nibelheim Massacre? That famous image of the silver-haired swordsman striding through an inferno? He annihilated an entire town after learning of his origins. This destructive path eventually leads him to being flung into a pool of Mako and entering the life stream, where he learned things about the universe that nobody else could possibly know. Did this make him want to become benevolent and help those who were still shrouded in darkness? No, it made him even angrier. Returning more powerful than ever, Sephiroth attempted to blow up the entire planet by bringing a meteor down upon it. Ah, simpler times. Eventually, he manifests as a terrible quasi-deity with seven wings and a penchant for destruction. Even after his defeat at the hands of Cloud, he doesn't truly disappear. His legacy is continued on by Geostigma, and his presence is still felt by many. So while not a true angel, he definitely ascended past mere humanity and became something more. And nobody should be looking to summon him anytime soon. Coming in at number 4, we've got Fiore and De Blanc. Now here's an interesting duo. I'm breaking a few rules and conventions here, firstly because there's two of them, and also because these angels themselves aren't all that bad. But the thing is, if they're summoned, that means something bad has happened. And that bad thing sets a whole lot of other events in motion, eventually leading to God seemingly abdicating his throne and a man who fought during the Civil War taking over heaven. See, these are events you don't want happening, so don't summon Fiore and de Blanc, for your sake and mine. Preacher is an interesting take on religion, to say the least. We've got the Almighty disappearing from his duties, and his divine servants, meant to keep the peace and enact his will, are all more or less useless. So if you want something done, say the retrieval of a killer angel-demon hybrid who fuses with people and grants them great power, it's best not to leave it to them. But here we are. The inciting incident in Preacher, Jesse Custer fusing with Genesis and gaining the ability to make people do whatever he says, happens because these two doofuses can't do their job right. Typical angel. Is that blasphemous? Am I gonna get smited for that? Uh, I suppose all these angel videos lately have punched my ticket, might as well go with it. They kick off the series letting everyone know that God has indeed left his throne, which starts a whole array of other events. Then they can't get Genesis back to heaven, so they kinda just accept their failure. These two sorry bastards then spend all their time indulging in earthly pleasures and acting all around unangelic. Unbelievable, right? The worst bit is when you put two and two together, with both preacher and proper angelic lore. What happens when angels sleep with humans? The Nephilim. That might not be canon in Preacher, but I'll make the leap for you. Here's a comprehensive guide to what happens when you summon these two ineffective angels. They mess up, they inadvertently cause all sorts of goofs, they decide to give it all up and indulge in hedonism, they sire enormous humanoid monsters that bring a world-ending flood. Hmm. They might seem harmless, but they're gonna be way more trouble than they're worth. Coming at number 3, we've got Duma. Already we can see the negative implications in a name like Duma. You know, Duma? 
you get it. With all the angel talk we've been up to lately, I'm actually surprised it took me this long to properly bring up Supernatural. Crazy, I know, but here we are. Sure, Duma isn't like a mainline villain for very long, but she gets up to all sorts of wickedness in a relatively short period of time. Realizing that angels are dying out, she looks for other options to keep her kind alive. She realizes that capturing and enslaving a Nephilim could be the solution to her problems, and begins to search immediately. This brings her to Castiel, who refuses to cooperate, as the angels enslaving the Nephilim Jack could end poorly for everyone. Thus begins a long struggle between Duma and Castiel, resulting in the former taking up the throne of heaven. Her rule was one characterized by an iron fist. Usually heaven is seen as a place of peace and prosperity where everyone has their needs met and can live in paradise. Under Duma, that's not so much the case. She quickly turned it into a merciless prison where human souls were often beaten into submission. Damn. In order to keep her power, she even threatened to destroy John and Mary Winchester's shared heaven. However, that did turn out to be the wrong move, and if you know why, you know why. But yeah, unless you want to be beaten to your knees while in the paradise that is heaven, don't summon Duma. Coming in number two, we've got Merkin, Mother of Spiders. Seems less than angelic, but she's an angel all right, or maybe a demon. Boy, you better watch out around her though. She appears as an envoy with Azazel and is just the image of hideousness. Lumpy, horrifying, and with a womb full of spiders, she's more than most would be able to handle. However, she's supposedly based on a photograph titled Amour, New Mexico, 1987, so someone's gotta love her. I just don't know if that's something anyone is interested in doing. Eight-legged freaks from a fallen angel envoy doesn't sound like much fun, if you ask me. And finally, at number one, we've got Adam and Lilith. Yeah, I'm breaking the rules with doubles again, so sue me. Here we have the two top dogs when it comes to angels and Evangelion. Everyone has their favorite, or least favorite, of these celestial beings threatening humanity as we know it, but there's no denying that these two are at the head of the hierarchy. These two seeds of life are responsible for all of the life forms on Earth, with Adam creating the destructive angels and Lilith creating the humans. Their power is unmatched, and their creations will never know peace, especially during the events of Evangelion, when the angels consistently attack and destroy bastions of humanity. When your last hope against the enemy of this scale is a bunch of unstable teens in mech suits, you'd best be worried. These are not kind angels, they're not even vengeful, they're destructive like nothing else, and will not stop until everything is in pieces. Damn. We took a bit of a different approach today, but hopefully these angels are just as interesting as the traditional ones we focused on before. Fiction writers love angels in all their forms, so there's always more to discuss. So what'd you think of the list? Do you agree with my picks? Which angels do you find the freakiest? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more glassy ones from the top five true stories scarier than The Conjuring. Psycho Ken says, I've never laughed at any attempts to be funny by the hosts of this channel. Brackets, not intentionally, I use the channel for background noise or when driving. But the Ben Shapiro nonsense got me. Touche, Keegan. I'm not sure if I should take that as a compliment or not. Sure, I got a laugh out of you, but only once? Ever? D.E. Herod says, ha, I see Barton Fink in your DVD collection. Classic. John Goodman in peak form for sure. And with this current heat wave, I'm starting to feel like my wallpaper's gonna peel. Amethyst RL says, scary stories aren't scary or true, they aren't scary or nothing. The Conjuring isn't even scary, it's funny. Wow, you're hardcore, eh? I bet nobody messes with you. The Bright Side says, I mean, these are pretty scary, but The Conjuring is one of the scariest horror movies out there. While scary, I believe it could be scarier. Chris Harvey says, hey, Fire Emblem is life, man. See, this guy gets it. Although I would give anything for another GBA style game. And Matthew Boyajian says, please do top best horror movies of all time. I don't think anybody's ready for the fallout in the comments if we run something like that. Generate your own list and see how many haters appear. And that is all the time we have for today. I'm gonna go take a swim near the white water rapids. No life jacket. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Well, 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 here we are again, discussing angels and all of their downsides. I realized I didn't turn my lights on. Way to go, Keegan. Benefit of being in a bright sunny room. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> Fully understand it is nope. Look, if you're gonna bleh, 
look, if you're going to summon something, you fully look. I'm about to sneeze. That is a low flying plane. And a garbage truck. This has been a phenomenal recording. <laughs> it's gone really well. Bro, what's going on out there?